Corn School is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. Catching up today with Albert Chinudo, Mafra's uh, plant pathologist here at Ridgetown. We want to talk about vomitoxin and uh, ear molds and all those things that uh, we don't like to see in the fall. Albert, last year wasn't very good. How's 2017 shaping up? Well, we can never predict what's going to happen. We're still early on that. There are a few things that, again, um, are concern. You know, the late crop that we have this year means that a lot of that grain fill, the late stage of development, and that will be later on in the season. As we see today and what we've seen over the past week or so, you know, we're into almost late August, almost September now, right? And uh, those heavy dews that we've seen, those are great um, environmental conditions for ear molds and ultimately potentially for vomitoxin as well. And the earlier the molds establish, uh, particularly gibberella and that, the greater the potential that we could have problems later on. And there's a few other um, compounding factors there as well. And uh, this year has been pretty good for Western bean cutworm. Yep. Um, you know, there are, uh, we just missed or we just finished off with our peak flight there. Uh, Western bean cutworm um, can cause injury into the ears, allowing the the, the gibberella, the, the fungus to get in. And, you know, here, we, you know. You've got some evidence. There. Oh, yeah, here, this isn't even Western bean cutworm. We're looking at Japanese beetle silk clipping here. And a uh, great example over here as well, where we're seeing injury opening up of that ear to, you know, with insect feeding and that bird injury as well. All of these um, openings to that ear allow for the gibberella, fusarium, other ear mold pathogens and that to get in there and that can potentially uh, get the disease started and um, and then subsequently develop and, and all, uh, potentially develop into uh, mold problems as well. And so um, that is uh, a factor that uh, can contribute. We talked earlier about uh, northern corn leaf blight, some of those later season um, diseases, that foliar leaf diseases that we see in the late season as well. And so uh, diseases such as northern corn leaf blight, again, can compromise or impact that, that plant's overall health, um, stress those plants, stock rots as well, anything that can result in those plants cannibalizing themselves and uh, moving resources to, to fill that ear could result in increased stresses and, and, and have an impact. Tell us about, I mean, it's late August now, it seems to be raining every day and uh, those conditions uh, seems to be right for, the, for that type of situation. What should growers be doing as we, we, we soldier through the fall? Yeah, and so important uh, to be out there scouting. Um, you know, it's still early right now. We haven't really seen any impact or, or ear mold starting to develop. Um, Omafra, uh, with the support of the uh, GFO, as well as this year, we're going to work with OABA and, uh, and do our annual uh, ear mold and mycotoxin survey. And we'll be doing that in that third week or fourth week of September or so. Uh, we'll be shifting it back a bit because of the later season. And so we'll get a better handle of where we're at at that point in terms of uh, the incidence of ear mold as well as the vomitoxin uh, levels in that. And so for growers, they should be out there evaluating again. Look at your hybrids, you know, which ones are maybe more susceptible, which ones are more tolerant. Um, you have some idea on those and get out there and do a pre-harvest assessment. Look for ear molds, look for stock rots, anything like that uh, that uh, could be impacting the overall health of those crops. If you see stock rot issues, ear mold issues, you know, if you're looking at 10 or 15 percent, um, you want to get that crop out of the field as quickly as possible because you don't want it to sit there and you don't want, um, especially in the later season where adverse weather could have an impact and keep you out of that field, which will allow for um, the gibberellas, the ear rots and the vomitoxin to continue to develop and that. So get it out of the field as quickly as possible, dry it down, um, get that once it's dried down to you know, 15 percent or so, the, the mold won't be developing, won't grow. So we want to get out of the field as in good shape as possible so that we can minimize um, the field conditions that allow for those molds and, and, and ear rots to develop as well as the vomitoxin. And then remember storage as well. You want to make sure when you put something in the bin, it never comes out better than when it went in. But we really want to make sure that it, when it comes out again, that it's as good as it went in.